All right, we're going to look at some of the feature tools in Onshape. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new document, and I'm going to call it Feature Tools, and then my initials. Go ahead and click OK. And we're going to start by creating a new sketch on the front view. So I'm going to click on my view cube and select the front view. I'm going to turn off the visibility on the uh, default plane so I only see my sketch plane that I've created. And we're going to start by creating a uh, rectangle. I'm going to dimension that and give it an overall width of 4 inches and an overall height of 2 inches. Notice that, um, let's make that 2.5 inches, sorry, 2.5. Um, and notice that when I do that, the lines turn from blue to black to tell us that our sketch is fully constrained. So I'm going to go ahead and click the green check mark. I'm going to come over here to my view cube and select an isometric view. Click the extrude tool, and I'm going to extrude that a depth of 1.25 inches, and go ahead and click the green check to accept that extrusion. The next thing that I'm going to do is um, do some subtractive modeling, and so I'm going to create another sketch. This time I'm going to put that sketch on the front surface of my part. I'm going to get the line tool go from the origin up to the top of the object, over to the corner, and back to the origin. Again, notice that I have a blue line, meaning that the sketch is not fully constrained. And so I'm going to, um, in this case, apply an angular constraint, an angular dimension to um, that line. So I'm gonna click my dimension tool, I'm gonna click on the angled line and the vertical line and I'm gonna drag a angular dimension. I'm gonna go, go ahead and uh, make that angle 30 degrees. Finish the sketch, go to an isometric view. And I'm gonna click extrude again and I'm gonna select that triangle sketch that I just made. Except this time instead of adding, I'm going to click the remove material. And so this is called an extrude cut when you're removing material. And I'm gonna change it the end type from blind to through all. And that means it go, will go clear through the part. I'll go ahead and click uh, the green check mark. And you can see how our part has been affected. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is add a chamfer to our part. And so I'm going to come up here to the chamfer tool. There are several different types of chamfer. You can apply to parts, two distances, distance and an angle. We're going to do an equal distance for this one. I'm going to type in an eighth of an inch or 0.125. And I'm going to select the top edge, the top two edges of my part, and I'm going to apply a chamfer to those edges. Then I'm going to go ahead and click the green check mark to um, end that feature. The next thing I'm going to do is orbit with by holding down my right mouse button and get to where I can see the bottom of my sketch, or excuse me, my part. And I'm going to create a sketch on that bottom view. So I'm going to go ahead and click the view cube so I can see the bottom. I'm going to grab a point tool and I'm going to come over from the origin and place that uh, point out there. Then I'm going to dimension it to the origin and I'm going to make it four inches away from the origin. Then I'm going to grab a circle tool, go from the point I just created and, and draw a, a center point circle. Again, the line's blue because it's not fully constrained. I'll add a dimension to this of 20 inches. So that'll be a 20 inch diameter circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, finish that sketch. Go to an isometric view of my geometry. And we're going to, going to uh, use a pattern tool. And so over here we have a linear pattern and circular pattern. In this case, I'm going to choose the circular pattern tool. And this tool is going to allow us to uh, create um, a pattern of features. 
And so it's asking me the entities that I want to pattern. I want to pattern this, and then it wants me to give an axis to pattern around. I'm going to click that circle, and instead of creating a new pattern, I'm going to click. Um, actually, I am going to click uh, um, new to create. Um, these new uh, pattern parts. I'm going to change the instant count to eight. And so that allows us to adjust how many we want to pattern around our circle. We could also change the angle here. Um, I'm going to change that angle to 270 degrees so that the parts are located um, around that circle. Um, they're only patterned for 270 degrees. And I'm going to leave equal spacing selected and I'm going to click the green check mark. And you notice now we've patterned that um, feature uh, multiple times. I'm going to come back to that sketch three where uh, we had that circle that we drew that we used to create that circular pattern. And I'm going to turn the visibility of that circle on. I'm going to click the extrude button and I'm going to click on the circle to extrude. Um, in this case, instead of clicking new, I'm going to click add. And then I'm going to select that I want to merge with all. And so what that did is uh, it's going to create, instead of a new, a new solid, it's going to add to the solid that we've already created. Um, I also made sure I went and clicked this sketch geometry um, on the bottom and selected it too. So I have two faces for this extrusion. I can leave it at one inch and go ahead and click the check mark. And you can see that we've now um, added, added to our solid. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is look at the fillet tool. So I'm going to click the fillet tool. If I come in here and I just select the top surface of this, it's going to fill it every um, instance that it can uh, within that surface. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and click the check mark. Anytime we have an inside angle and we add that to it, it's called a fillet. If we have an outside angle, it's called a round. And so what I'm going to do now is uh, click the fillet tool again. And then I'm going to click these front faces of the feature that we've patterned. Once I have all of those selected, I can go ahead and I can um, click the green check mark to apply that feature. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a hole to the center of our part. So I'm going to click the hole tool. Anytime we want to add a hole, we want to use the hole tool. And I'm going to click this center point that I want to add the hole to. And I'm going to change the diameter of that hole to four inches. So what that did is it created a four inch diameter hole. The hole tool again has different types. You have a counterborn, a countersink, and a simple hole. And then you can tell it if you want it to go through all or be a blind hole. And so there's a lot of options um, within the hole tool. I'm gonna, once I have that four inch diameter hole, I'm gonna go ahead and click the green check mark to end it. The command. And then I'm gonna create one more sketch on the top of this object. So I'll go to the top view. I'm going to go to, from this origin point and I'm going to draw a line out. I'm going to hit escape to end that command. And then I'm going to go again from the center point and draw another line out. And I'm going to dimension an angular dimension from the edge of the closest feature to it and I'm going to make it 30 degrees and 30 degrees. So those two lines are 30 degrees from each of those angles. I'm then going to get my um, 
three-point arc tool. I'm going to say I want an arc here, here, and I'll zoom in a little bit, and I want that arc to be right on the edge of the object. So I'm having trouble selecting that edge, and so another tool you can use that I want to show you here is Project. So I'm going to click the Project tool, and I'm going to click that outside circle. And what that did is it projected that sketch of the outside edge of that circle to my current sketch that I'm creating. Um, then I'm going to grab my three-point arc tool again. And I'm going to select those two points and draw that arc in. Um, I'm then going to finish that sketch. And I'm going to remove that material. So I need to change the direction. And I'm going to want it to go through all. And then I can go ahead and click to finish that surface. Finish that feature, excuse me. Um, if you notice, our sketch three is still visible. So I can come over here and since I'm done editing that sketch, I can turn the, the eyeball off of that and I can see the part that I've created. The last thing that I'm gonna show you on um, this tutorial is the shell tool. And so the shell tool is right here. I'm gonna select the shell tool and select the bottom surface of our object. And I'm gonna leave the shell thickness at a 10th of an inch. And so if I look at the bottom surface of this, what it's done is it's hollowed out the bottom surface and it's uh, created a shell. So everywhere on this object is one tenth of an inch thick. And so that's how um, you can uh, use the shell tool. Last thing I want you to do is come down here to your part studio one, right click on um, the uh, part and let's rename this extrude features.